for those that uh, do come up after us on stage, uh, just know there aren't there aren't cold hands in the room. So, you know, so you didn't hear me squeal earlier. So, anyway, be be prepared for uh, some dad jokes and uh, some other other corny things to come. Uh, so, my name is Lee. Uh, this is uh, Garish. Uh, we're uh, stoked to be here. We've been working um, in the NSM community for a little while now. We've been fortunate enough to have, um, well, a couple of other folks who are were deeper into the NSM community than we are uh, from Lumina Networks. And so you may, you may know these faces from uh, other presentations, but Harshini and Prem, uh, fortunate enough to have them come over and uh, work within an open source project that, that we're stewarding. Uh, we'll tell you all about that one. And in no uh, apologetic way, we will be, uh, what was the, um, there was an apology at the end of the last talk for hawking something. We're gonna, there's no apologies for hawking what we're going to hawk. This. We're just gonna, um, which is hopefully a bunch of, uh, hopefully helpful, helpful things. So, Speaking of helpful things, there is uh, a couple of, a couple of books that I was uh, able to, to get out here, and one of them is free. Uh, for those who wear the noob, hello, hello, my name is noob, like some of us do. Um, the, the one on the left-hand side is a short report, but it's, it's uh, still, even though it's about a year old, it's still an accurate introduction to the service mesh land. And if you're like me, it's somewhat helpful because it calls out, it presents service meshes in context of some things you might already know things like a container orchestrator, things like a client-side library, things you might have used in lieu of a service mesh until they became and are becoming popular. Anyway, free stuff. Also, there's a book signing, or a couple of them, on the Istio one, so. <sighs> yeah. Boy, I hadn't really thought about how to present this slide other than just sort of another corny joke about it being meshy out there. There's a lot of, there's just an amazing number of ways you can use mesh and sort of make new words out of it. The thing is, is uh, this is true, it is a bit meshy out there. And as a new genre of technology comes forward, so too do a number of new projects, a number of new products. Uh, some of whom will take that buzzword service mesh and sort of just rub some of that buzziness uh, on their product, uh, maybe in advance of their product really being uh, sort of a sanctified and blessed service mesh, uh, but but you know who who can blame them? Uh, who, who doesn't who doesn't want to rub some rub some mesh on them? So um, uh, yeah, H who can tell me? Who can take a guess? How many service meshes are out there? Who's got a who's got a number? A dozen. A dozen? Very good guess. That's a very good number. Dozen is a great guess, uh, and it, in, in some respects depends upon how you count. Um, as a matter of fact, there's, we've been counting. There's a service mesh landscape, um, it's layer 5 IO slash landscape, that <clears throat> um, begins to count them up. And it doesn't have all of them, um, but, but it's kind of interesting because it's more than a dozen. Um, I would think that any one of you, if you were to walk around the conference and say, um, you know, ask someone else, hey, how many, how many service, you know, you've heard about service meshes, how many are there? They'd probably, you know, prattle off of like two, uh, some of us three uh, of the more popular ones. Um, some that are going to be talked about um, even more today. So kind of interesting. So the, the point here is that the world is a multi-mesh world. It's my belief that um, dissimilar from the container orchestration wars, where, where we still have a number of container orchestrators, they're still being maintained, people are still using them, but, but here in the tech community, we kind of uh, look down our, our big long noses in a bigoted way and, and sort of chuckle when someone says, <laughs> Docker Swarm. <laughs> I can't believe you said, you know, that, that you admitted to still using that. Um, when actually it, it still serves, uh, you, you know, many, many use cases and maybe all of someone's use cases, all of an organization's use cases. And so I think it's, what I'm trying to say is let's be inclusive. I think it's okay to, to use, um, the, to ride the horse that didn't necessarily win that particular race. Point is, the analog here is that um, from my perspective, there won't, while we will have some convergence, there won't be dozens or 20 or so service meshes a, a year or more from now that will you know, consolidate a little bit. There's this natural flow of how those things work, but that we'll still have 
Some of these will still be here. It will, it will be a multi-mesh world. Come talk to me about some of the particulars about that. The, um, off record, we can, I'll, I'll give you some insights as to maybe why that would continue to be. Because of this, there are two independent initiatives to define uh, abstract specifications for interfacing with multiple meshes. Uh, who was at KubeCon EU this last six months ago? What have you? Very good. I, we are, I am in good company. This is great. Uh, uh, service SMI, Service Mesh Interface, was announced on stage. There were some nice uh, pre-recorded demos, pre-recorded because, because, uh, the, because there was a bit of, bit of magic behind the scenes because it was a young specification. This specification has advanced since then. And this specification, SMI, is oriented toward uh, providing a single API surface for interfacing to any number of different service meshes. It's a young spec, so it's only gotten so far in its use cases, and it's only gotten so far in its compatibility with the, the, the world of many meshes out there. Uh, here recently, anybody at uh, VMworld, I think, was there two that just happened? The VMworld US, I guess, is the, anybody? All right, um, very good. Uh, I know some of, the, some of us wearing VM, VMware badges were probably at that. And so announced there also was, um, at the time it wasn't called Hamlet, but the internal project name for um, this second uh, complementary uh, vendor neutral specification about how to interface agnostically with service meshes is called Hamlet. It's uh, by and large stewarded by VMware, but there are others, uh, Google and, and others participating. Um, and it is for purposes of helping you federate meshes together. So maybe you've got hetero, um, Homogeneous meshes, the same type of mesh, but in different clusters, different places. Some meshes have capabilities and facilitate for multi-cluster mesh, or, or like bringing together those, those clusters and running a single overarching mesh, or running them in a highly resilient way. Um, Hamlet is a specification for, uh, for that and for bringing together heterogeneous message, meshes. I'm going to say that word so many times that I'm going to mess myself up here if I... Anyway, is uh, to federate them and have them exchange and announce services across one another. It's a very interesting spec. We're participating in that as well. Um, and hence, the project that we've been putting in a fair bit of time into. <laughs> if I didn't say the word mesh enough, uh, here's another. So turns out like a meshery is what we've called it. It's a multi-mesh manager. It is what we consider a management plane. Um, yeah, we're uh, proud of it thus far. There's a, a decent community that's formed around it. A lot, of, a lot of students coming to cut their teeth on open source on this project, so it's, so it's pretty neat. The, the reason that this is important is that it is a multi-mesh world. As a matter of fact, it was a Google Summer of Code project as well this last summer, so that was nice. It goes, sets off to interface and advance both of these specifications. Again, going back to that belief that, that we will be in this multi-mesh world for some time. It doesn't necessarily take a bunch of insight to sort of look at the vendors uh, behind these various meshes and their competing interests. Also to look at which meshes are governed by vendor neutral bodies like the, the, those that the, the Linux Foundation has, like the CNCF, and those that aren't. And, and it's because of those because of those things, you know, I, I think we'll continue to live in a multi-mesh world. And so um, let me, let's, uh, let's show you what meshery looks like on um, the interface. All right. Um, so I already have the page up. Uh, so here is uh, meshery. So Lee actually just introduced you guys to what meshery is. Now, uh, this project is uh, just like uh, network service mesh. Uh, the back end is all pretty much Go. Um, and the front end, like, you know, in order to make it nicer to, you know, uh, in order to appeal better to the users, we had to actually bring in a, a nice UI framework. Like, you know, so we're using React uh, and uh, Material UI uh, for, the, uh, for the front end. Uh, of course, like, you know, you can see it's, you know, it's still in the works. It, you know, uh, the UX is, is getting better day in, day out. You know, it's much better than, like, you know, how we presented it out of the previous KubeCon. So. Um, so here is actually a dashboard. Uh, so where uh, we try to present, like you know, some connectivity stuff. So in uh, in Meshery, we have this concept of uh, adapters. So you know, like Lee already mentioned, like you know, that we are planning to work with multiple meshes. So here on the left, you can actually see the existing service meshes we work with, and uh, you know, here um, you can see the network service mesh 
The logo is a bit tiny, but you know, um, obviously uh, that is one of the uh, meshes like you know we are working with. Of course, like you know, that's a very different mesh when compared to all the other ones there. Uh, that's definitely something I have to tell here. So, so yeah, so here, so we have a dashboard, and um, you know, um, and we started off with Istio. So uh, the first thing we try to work with is Kubernetes. Uh, you know, now we are working with multiple, but then Kubernetes is still our first point of contact. So, so I have a Kubernetes cluster. I've already connected, uh, you know, meshery to it. Um, and um, and then here uh, you can see like you know I have a bunch of adapters, but you can see all of them have the same logo, of course. And then uh, for for presenting some some metrics uh, from Kubernetes itself, like you know we work with Prometheus and Grafana using their APIs. So uh, first things first, uh, Meshri. Um, I, th I think like you know Lee hasn't actually touched the part like you know where Meshri works with multiple meshes, but we also are marching towards a place where, you know, we want to give the end users the power to actually, you know, compare and contrast meshes for their workloads. So, you know, because we have presented, like, you know, Istio at so many conferences, and people keep coming back to us and asking, okay, so what is the overhead of this? Why is this better than Linkerd? And, you know, I mean, all, all these questions keep coming up. So rather than, you know, uh, asking them to read some existing benchmarks, like, you know, people would want to actually try out their workloads on the different meshes. So Meshery actually provides them that capability by, you know, provisioning the service meshes and also, like, you know, allowing them to deploy their workloads and then also giving an interface, like, you know, to perform load tests. So, so here is actually um, a simple interface, like, you know, where uh, you can see uh, currently, like, you know, we support multiple load generators. Uh, how many here n have heard of WRK2? WRK, WRK2? All right. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, so um, uh, Ford.io, uh, since we again started off with Istio, like, you know, Ford.io was actually our first go-to, plus it's written in Go, so it was much easier for us to, you know, get started with. Now recently, uh, we actually heard about WRK, and uh, uh, the, especially the WRK2 flavor talks something about coordinated omission, you know, so you guys should go and check it out, sh check it out because I'm obviously not going to be the best guy who will explain coordinated omission to you guys better. So anyway, so, so we have two load generators. We support two. Um, and then you can see, uh, you know, by default, we actually collect some metrics uh, from the Kubernetes cluster. So, you know, you can actually see the server-side metrics, like, you know, when you're performing the load test. And when you perform the load test, you'll also see, uh, you know, uh, a client-side metric uh, as well, like, you know, where, you know, you can actually see how the application itself performed from an end user's perspective. So that's this page, and then the other thing is that uh, we actually provide, we, we process the results in an anonymous way, and uh, I love uh, you, know, you to actually compare your results like, you know, against the different test runs, against different versions of your app, against different meshes, and so on and so forth. So um, you know, I, can, I can just uh, show one, like, you know, so for example, so here is actually a graph like, you know, from a recent run, which also where we, we try to persist some Kubernetes information. I know the image is a bit tiny, uh, but if you guys give it a try, like, you know, you'll be able to see the uh, stuff. Um, and uh, apart from that, like, you, know, you can actually see the metrics in like, a, a much better way, in a textual way, like, you know, if you're just interested at it, uh, the latency information. And then the same way, like, you know, we can actually, we love comparing results. So you can actually see you know, how one version you know, uh, per behaved or you know, performed against the other. So, uh, so these are some of the uh, performance side capabilities of Meshery. Now, uh, before I actually jump into the management layer, like, uh, sorry, the management capabilities, uh, I have to go and like, you know, connect adapters. So here is the section like, you know, where you know, we allow you to connect to Kubernetes. So we are, I mean, like, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm already connected to one, so, you know, uh, and it actually shows the context name, the server name, et cetera. Um, and then uh, this is the section where we uh, will be bringing in the adapters. So I have an NSM adapter that's actually running on port 10,004. So once I connect, again, the communication between Meshery and the adapters is over gRPC. Um, so that's another like, you know, popular project. So you can see once it connected, like, you know, it actually gets the metadata from the adapter and you, know, you can see the Meshery logo, sorry, the, uh, the network service mesh logo show up. Uh, once it's connected, like, you know, on the left, you can actually see that you know, uh, there is a new section in the navigation menu that actually shows up. Uh, so I'm just going to go there, and from here, you can actually interact uh, with the adapter to perform some operations on the Kubernetes cluster. So now this NSM adapter will actually allow, like, for example, to, to you know, easily provision uh, you know, the, the mesh of your choice. 
like according to the adapter you chose and you work with. Like for example, in this case, like you know, it'll allow you to actually quickly deploy a network service mesh for you to actually get your hands dirty. Uh, of course, like you know, it'll, it'll, it, it, we 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 are starting off with some default options for now. Like, but eventually we'll be you know uh, uh, creating a more robust UI where people can actually pick and choose and customize like what they want to do with it. Um, and then we have some sample applications. Some of them are already from the network service mesh uh, examples. Like you know, so you know, people know about it. So you know, I think uh, that will be a great start for you guys to actually get acquainted with. Along with that, we actually created a new app, you know, called the Hello NSM application. I'll, I'll be touching on that, like you know, when I do the deployment. Uh, apart from that, like you know, there is this custom config section, like you know, where you know, again, people would want to, you know, sink their teeth with YAML because sometimes it's much easier. So you know, so we also provide that capability using this custom config section. So, so that's that's the management section right now, like you know, where Meshery can work with adapters and work on Kubernetes cluster with the mesh of your choice. So, so this is the whole thing. Uh, before I actually go into the next sections, like you know, uh, Lee will actually continue his talk. Arish said it well when he spoke to the genesis of the project, why we created it, and why there's a community of people that are helping us create it now. Part of it was the notion that we, well, we presented that uh, I don't know I, uh, at the last like six Cubecoms or so, and and. A couple of those times we're presenting service mesh workshops, at the end of which, and, and a lot of times those were on, on Istio, but at the end of which people would, um, you know, they, they, they would raise their hand and ask two questions, really the, the same two that um, Grish had mentioned. They'd first say, well, hey, you know, so I kind of get it, like the, the, I'm, I'm beginning to grok and understand what a service mesh is, uh, I'm ready to try it out, which one do you recommend that I try? And so, you know, the, the answer there is sort of generally like, it. it it depends, and so um, in order to facilitate that adoption and overcome the adopter's dilemma, we ended up uh, bringing forth meshery that will provision more service meshes than any other project today. And I think, I think the project will probably keep that lead for, well, forever, we'll see. Um, the second thing that uh, most of the engineers in the room would say, well, you know, so I see, you know, again, I see the value, I'm ready to try these out, but, but wait, a, wait a second. The, I'm getting all these metrics, I'm getting, all these, I'm getting all this observability, I'm getting this security, I'm getting this fine-grained traffic control over how it is that, you know, over, uh, I'm getting circuit breaking and retrying and all these things that I might have otherwise built into, a hard, you know, built into my application. I'm pulling that out into the infrastructure and I'm expecting more out of the infrastructure. Um, well, what's the overhead here? What's the catch? And given that each individual project, uh, not all of the service mesh projects produce their own reports about performance, some do. Um, and for that, they're applauded because performance engineering and kind of answering the question of how much overhead is there is one of those befuddling sort of it depends upon what you're running and how frequently you're doing this and how many, how much, you know, how much you're asking the service mesh to do. Even if those individual projects produce their, their own metrics, they're not really comparable. That you can't really compare across them. It's a bit of apples to oranges. And so that's a bit frustrating. So, so really, Meshery was probably born out of frustration for lack of being able to people answer people's questions. So we set off to do that. You know, in, in doing that, you come to, you know, th this is a, an earlier time in which I consider that, <clears throat> well, like any new term, as we bring it forth in the, this technology community, it needs to be defined. And, Earlier I'd said, well, maybe, maybe certain projects shouldn't be rubbing that service mesh word up against themselves. Um, but by that, what do I mean? What qualifies a project or a product as a service mesh? So, so what do you, how do you have to have? What, what, how do all of these service meshes uh, uh, compare architecturally or not? Most of them look pretty similar. Uh, our beloved network service mesh looks a bit different, which is, which is nice. And you're gonna, I think that's a theme you're going to hear about today. Most network service meshes, including um, NSM, have uh, what's referred to, and for those that, uh, like half the audience, this is great, by the way, like more than, you know, half the audience raised their hand earlier when, when we said, who of you in here is a network engineer or is network savvy? So this is the most, the most networking savvy audience that we've had, so this, this is great. Anyway, the point is, so these are very familiar terms to you, the uh, data plane. This is the, it's a collection of either, in the NSM's case, potentially a collection of pipes, of connections, or uh, proxies. 
And this is uh, where you, you lay down this data plane of, of proxies or of pipes, and they do the heavy lifting. They, they, they sit there transparently in line, unbeknownst to your application, and they're providing network services. Um, it, to be, you know, most of your meshes then are going to come with a control plane, uh, which is, again, a familiar term, whether you're in networking or not. But this is where you as the operator go over and you configure, uh, you use this as a point of configuration for how it is you want for the mesh to run, how you want it to behave. Um, it's also a, a collection point for policy and, and telemetry. And then there's a third layer, and this is particularly nice in this audience. That those of you carrying around your, your uh, CCNPs and your, your CCIEs and et cetera, and your whatever the Juniper version of that is and, and other things, that you're from, probably familiar with the management plane and the concept that there's a bit of separation of concern between these things. You're also potentially wondering what's the difference between a control plane and a management plane in context of service mesh. Well, meshery is an, an implementation of a management plane um, in that it floats above uh, multiple meshes. And it's also going to perform some things that you won't see directly out of the mesh themselves, so some of which um, Garish spoke to. So if that's the generic architecture, let's take a look at uh, some of these meshes specifically about their architecture. So we'd said most of them have a, a control plane and a data plane. This is Istio's control plane. These are the most prominent um, Istio control plane components that we have uh, talks ad nauseum about uh, going through these in detail and kind of what all Istio does and how its data plane works. The default side, sidecar, proxy sidecar here is um, Envoy. Uh, that is a displaceable thing. That is a batteries included but swappable deal. That's not an easy thing to accomplish some friends at, at Citrix have recently, recently accomplished this, so kind of, kind of interesting. G given the time and how, how uh, long I like to speak, I'm going to keep, keep going and, and say that, hey, there are other service meshes. There's, there's a, an, a, a meshery adapter for Octarine. Octarine is a security-centric service mesh. It will lay down either in a complementary fashion to Istio, if you're running Istio, or not. You can just lay down Octarine itself. It does, it too uses... Um, uh, Envoy Inside, I guess, with the little, little trademark after the Envoy Inside. Uh, Linkerd, um, also here, control plane, data plane, different components, does some different things. I would love to talk in depth on each of these, but I'm going to bite my tongue. Um, uh, Linkerd is moving briskly to catch up in functionality with Istio. Istio is uh, doing what it can to bring a better user experience and kind of catch up with Linkerd. Sort of a, just a quick tidbit for you. A little, uh, uh, Meshery itself then comes in uh, over top of these as a management plane. It's made up of a few different things, a number of different adapters. We're hoping that the number of adapters, that right now it's kind of a one-to-one -one adapter per network service, or I'm sorry, per service mesh type. We're hoping with our advancement of those abstract service mesh specifications that some of that work can begin to subside. Um, right now, there are five stable adapters. There are two or more in-flight ones. I think uh, there are three. So, so NSXM, um, Citrix CPX, and contain, containus, Continuous Mesh. And we'll see if the Kong folks step up with Kuma. Anyway, point is, so Garish had, had mentioned earlier, and I think in our noob uh, discussion, we said network service mesh is a bit of a different uh, breed in, in an excellent way. So, in fact, it's highly complementary to, it's doing some of the heavier lifting uh, a bit down uh, lower than some of where these meshes uh, focus. And, thank good, and it's kind of interesting, actually, just by the audience in here, <laughs> that when we said, hey, you know, who's networking savvy, who feels comfortable, got lots of folks raising their hands. That's the absolute inverse. And most of the other uh, talks that we'll give on service meshes in general, it's mostly developers. And so you can see just by the, just in the way in which the project has come forth and, and um, who they're built for, um, it's different. So NSM um, can, is uh, maybe more flexible than my little brain wants it to be. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so thank, thanks for that. I, uh, I get my, my confidence and, and ego level just kind of, my wife particularly enjoys it getting sort of knocked back into place um, every time that I go to try to understand NSM. This is, uh, you know, one version of how it might look as you, you lay it down in a, in a, uh, on a given node. Um, 
It is, it is doing the things that we talked about. about. It does have a data plane. It does have a control plane. Um, and a flexible one at that, so this is nice. So a different perspective of that is, is a multi-node. multi, multi -node. There are uh, also another construct in here that's not necessarily highlighted, but there's an NSM domain. I get the sense that we'll hear about some of these constructs a bit later um, from, from through some of the other talks, but um, pretty interesting system. And if, again, going back to my smaller size brain, I like to, and, and to the fact that uh, as I learn something new, I like to do that in context of something else that I feel like I've got a good grasp on. And so to me, the closest relationship uh, of an existing technology that I'm familiar with is, um, is SDN. I've done, I've done a lot of SDN work at Cisco, um, and I'm happy to, happy to have spent time there and happy to be off doing other things as well. Uh, but there is uh, certainly an SDN uh, sprinklings uh, and kind of conceptual uh, sprinklings here in, in network service mesh. So with that, I think we were going to show maybe deployment of the network service mesh, or did we already? No, not yet. Okay, I, yeah, we, yeah, go ahead. I think we're running out of time. Yep. Sorry. All right. Awesome. So all right. So I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar with this commands here. I tried to maximize the size so you guys can actually see it better. Yeah, that's better. All right, so you know, I'm, I'm just showing that. Okay, I'm just testing if the namespace is ready. Um, so I'm going to actually first uh, show the deployment of uh, NSM in the NSM namespace. So, so I have the adapter chosen. You know, it's, it's ready to accept commands, and I just gave the NSM namespace. Um, in that cluster, and I'm going to ask it to actually deploy NSM. Um, and here, to make it interesting, we can actually watch the namespace. Right. So you can actually see, like you know, in in matter of seconds, it actually provisions the NSM. Of course, like you know, like I said, uh, we have chosen some defaults, and uh, thanks to Ed, like you know, he actually helped us with uh, Helm last week. Like you know, it was like really quick. I, I did run into some issues, but you know, I mean, uh, his Helm chart was like remarkable. Like you know, it actually solved the problem very quickly. <laughs> so so there it is. Like you know, so we are using Helm, and you know, so NSM is actually provisioned like you know, in a matter of seconds. Um, of course, like you know. Uh, the other thing I would say is like I think this is the first live demo of NSM in this con, so like we we are, we are, we are very proud. <laughs> uh, the next thing is um, I mean like you know you guys would have actually heard about like you know, all these other applications part of uh, NSM, which is the VPP uh, application, the VPP ICMP. Um, and then the ICMP itself, these are part of the NSM repo. Now what we actually did was that uh, we we wanted to actually create a new one. Uh, now, uh, it has two things. Like, you know, one is we wanted something which we can test using HTTP as a first part. Like, you know, the second one is like, you know, it also helps us to actually get, our, you know, uh, get ourselves some better understanding of NSM. So what we did was we actually created an app called the Hello NSM application. Uh, and I'll talk about that like, you know, as I deploy the application because you know, we are running out of time. Um, so I just clicked it, and you can see uh, the app come up. Uh, so essentially, uh, there are just two parts. The, uh, you know, we call it app A and B. Uh, B is actually the endpoint, the network service endpoint, and A is actually the client. So you can see uh, A has three pods, um, uh, sorry, three containers in a pod, while uh, B has two containers in a pod. Now, the other thing is, uh, in order to actually make it easier, you know, um, I also exposed a, you know, uh, created a Kubernetes service for um, you know, A and B, and I'll tell you why. So here is actually the, the port number like, you know, on which the service is exposed, so I'm going to try to access it. All right, so I can copy it probably. 31678. So, so here, excellent. So if you guys can actually see the screen, um, um, I, I did actually, so at the end of the, uh, part of the URL, like, you know, I actually put a slash k8s. So what we did was we created two, um, two pods 
to actually showcase you know, uh, the difference. I mean, again, this was more educational for us. So here, and then I tried to put, an, uh, put a diagram which will hopefully be educational. So here, when the app A and B uh, pods were actually provisioned, uh, you can actually see that they were connected to two networks. Like, you know, one is a Kubernetes one, like, you know, that's the default. And so now since I did, I mean, like, you know, the, the deployment the YAML contains the right uh, annotations, like, you know, uh, they were given uh, extra network uh, interfaces by network service mesh. So the, the slash k is endpoint, like, you know, so when I actually hit it, um, you can see that what it is actually doing is uh, it's talking to, so uh, the HTTP, the, the browser is talking to the, the uh, service app A, and app A is talking to app B over the Kubernetes, uh, um, Kubernetes network. And you can see that's the service name that was used. It's app B, it's as simple as that. Now I actually did another one, like, you know, which is the NSM one. So here you can see it is almost a very identical image, but, but you can see like, you know, what we have tried to show is that the network, uh, sorry, the network that's used for the communication between A and B is actually the NSM network. And at the bottom, like, you know, I've tried to print the NSM uh, IP address from which you know, uh, A got the response from, which was uh, 106012, so which is actually an NSM IP address. Like, you know, uh, so so that, that's what we try to do. Um, I'm not sure like, if we can actually go any much more intelligent than this, but, uh, this was like a quick uh, exercise for us to actually, you know, uh, learn and you know get our hands dirty with NSM, uh, you know, and uh, definitely thanks a lot for Ed again. Ed again. So, so you can see, like, you know, uh, with with like matter of like clicks, you know, we were able to quickly provision NSM and the sample application and actually see it all in working. Um, and then now I'm I'm actually not going to take more time, so I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible. Like, you know, so go back here, give it to our uh, thing, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, the load test will actually begin. So, so this is again another part of like measuring, like you know, where you know we perform the load test. So now I'm actually using the NSM network to actually perform a load test on the communication between app A and B, which are like the pods. Um, so you you can come over like you know while the test is, yeah, this is running. Where I insert uh, you know very funny jokes. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> that worked. That worked more than yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. And then, very good. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, so what we just tested here was uh, the, uh, the performance. That we, what we just did was generate a whole bunch of load from Meshery, the management plane, uh, slam that into uh, NSM's uh, new, well, the uh, Hello NSM app using NSM's uh, new network that NS NSM provisioned to get to that app. And then what you can do is uh, continue forth and maybe just based on time we won't, but you, you would then you know, run any, other, any number of other performance tests, but you then might say, well, let's hit the other interface where we're running just over the, the, the Kubernetes um, network and see the performance difference. And maybe we can say, well, hey, this is how much that costs in this environment and weigh that against the value of what NSM is providing. My perspective is you will, you will be very pleased. Uh, you can also go through, and so, yeah. So you can go through and then um, do some performance analysis of NSM itself, uh, the CPU usage. And right, so this is the overall CPU because we actually provision the sample application and NSM in the same namespace. So you can actually see that the NSM VPP forwarder was actually the one which was consuming the most CPU. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, no conclusions. Like, I mean, we, this was just like our regular analysis, like, you know, uh, because again, you know, this is part of like what Meshery is doing and what we try to infer from it, et cetera. Um, and then the same way, like, you know, so we have the memory usage, uh, you know, uh, analysis, and you can see the VPP forwarder definitely was actually uh, a major consumer. Uh, and the NSM manager was also actually like, you know, taking, uh, you know, trying to catch up uh, with it, while all the other ones like, you know, were actually not, you know, were, were tiny memory consumers. Uh, and then now uh, this is the, um, the uh, NSE's, uh, NSE pods CPU usage. Uh, of course, like you know, the sidecar endpoint did actually like you know show some uh, increase in CPU. Uh, you, you, I mean, like these were actually taken right after we ran some load tests. So obviously, you know, we expect spikes. Um, in a similar way, the uh, NSC had uh, three three containers in the pod, and you know, so you can actually see uh, how it all performed uh, with respect to the CPU. <clears throat> Context. You quite clearly, unless you have about a, you know 80 80 vision or whatever that would be that uh, this is not a zero to 100% scale, or rather this overhead here is quite negligible. The point of the slide, it is. It, yeah. we're, we're talking like, you know. Of course, uh, 
the point of the slide is to say, relative to, of these various components, what do they look like relative to one another as just a, a point of interest? Um, but a, a, another point of interest then is in understanding NSM, and there's, a, there's, there's graphs, NSM as compared to other network service meshes, of which these slides are something of a teaser. Uh, what we have here is a comparison of Istio, Linkerd, and Console. Those were the first three adapters that, Meshery, um, that, that were stable for Meshery. We'll go back and do this uh, probably in an extraordinarily unfair way for the other service meshes. We'll do this for, with network NSM included, and, and we'll have to apologize for everyone else looking much worse. And, uh, but uh, but point is, um, this is what part of why we, uh, Meshery was created to help answer some of these questions, help really help people be comfortable with understanding that if they're going to get some value out of a system, there's a here's what that overhead looks like. Help them tweak and, and tune things. I'm skipping through these in part because uh, there's a bit of context that needs to, that 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 if you go to the links that we'll give, you can read a bit more about the environments that these were tested in, the type of workloads that these were running, the type of how much load was being generated, and et cetera. It's, a, the, it'll, it's enough to put you to sleep for sure. With that, check out Meshery. All feedback is good feedback, unless you don't like Meshery, and then you can piss off. No. Good, good, good. Uh, lastly, um, there's, we're trying to make Layer 5 uh, a wealth of uh, information about service meshes in general. Um, if you're inclined, come, come help us. Come add to that. Or, you know, come subscribe. So, yeah.